Hey everyone, welcome back to the Book Vandal Shop. Got some journals to show you today. Um, so these will be available tonight, Tuesday, August 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. Okay, 7 p.m. tonight, Tuesday, August 16th, 7 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. So these are hardcovers. Um, let me see, let me find my ruler. Carly, Miss Itchy, Itchy Itchy Pants. Hey, <laughs> I've got a helper in the shop today. Um, these measure approximately, the covers are almost seven inches wide and I will tell you why they are so big. And then they are approximately nine inches tall. So they are a little bit wider covers than you would normally see on a typical um, full-size journal where we take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and fold it in half. Um, the covers are a little bit wider and let me show you why. And these are all pretty much identical on the inside. There might be, you know, for instance, wherever I, I stuck an embellishment at, you know, if there's a stamp there, it'll be a stamp in all three journals. It just may not have the same image on that stamp. Okay. So that would be the only differences you would find. All right. Why the journal is so wide. For one, it helps protect all your lace and all your things that are hanging out of the edges of your pages. Okay. And then number two reason is that this is a pretty chunky journal. And by the time you add a bunch of things into the pockets, you know, you, you end up with alligator mouth and I hate alligator mouth. So what I did with these is I um, created what I guess I'm going to call an expanded or expandable cover or an expandable spine for lack of a better term. Um, and so when it's, not an alligator mouth and you open it your spine has some flex and some give um so that when you open the first page or the first few pages um you know it's not pulling the whole journal over that's kind of cool but the main reason is that when this thing gets nice and chunky this cover will expand for you so this one i haven't worked this one open yet let me find one i've worked on some of them I've really played with and worked open like this one. So just bend it backwards a little bit like that. It'll eventually keep a memory for you to do that. And so now instantly we have an expanded spine and see how, see all that extra room that we have now. Okay. All that extra room and our journal still isn't alligator mouth. See? We got a nice big spine, room to expand without an alligator mouth. Okay. And that's, and all we had to do was kind of bend that back a little bit. Okay. And when I do that, even when I bend it back, my cover is still not, um, not too short. Still covers my page edges. So, all right. That gives you a little bit of wiggle room to, fill it up, fill the pockets without worry that it's going to get too, too alligator mouthy. Okay. And then, and when it's not all full, see, you can squish it back down to a nice normal cover. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm rambling. So let's see, we have an orangish covered one. Um, these are gilded kind of in a gold. I don't know if the camera picks up the gold right there. Um, a decorative paper on the front um, that has been sealed. We have a label plate. Um, the label has also been sealed on here. So unless you're writing maybe with a Sharpie, then you might want to um, take a normal regular piece of paper yourself and write on it first and then slide it in. And you can always glue it in there so it doesn't fall out. Um, but the label is sealed, so it's you can write on it if if you use something like a sharpie, okay. Rounded spine or a somewhat curved spine, hardcover, okay. Um, these are three signatures plus two additional add-in um, sort of a storage 
um, signatures. So it'd be five total, but three writing signatures. So this is the orangish, orangish colored one um, with the gold edges. Um, the spines are right now not expanded. They are about two and a half. Okay, that's the orangish one. This one's a little more pink, again, with some gold. Um, it also has a little bit of orangish color um, to go with the color scheme. So it's kind of distressed, but then has some gold. Okay, and then this one is the greenish covered one with gold gilded edges and distressed. Okay, and these are a curved spine and they are also a hollow Hollow spine, meaning that your signature block is not glued to the back of the spine itself. Okay, it's hollow. Um, and the reason for doing hollow spines like that is the journals tend to lay flat for writing easier. Because what it does is see how it flexes up like that? Flexes up and allows those pages to lay flat. Okay, so that's what a hollow back spine does for you. Just a little bit of educating there. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and go through this one. Like I said, they are all pretty much identical, darn near close to being identical on the inside. So when we first open up here, um, this is that floating uh, loaded pocket that I had originally made and posted on Instagram. Um, and so now it's no longer a floating pocket because I decided where it's going to go. Um, but there are... Some items in here. Some of these came from Lisa um, in a in a book that she made for me to hold um, ephemera and stuff. So some of the things in here are from that. Um, this is an actual bank check, an, an original bank check from 1930. Um, and each of the journals will have the same um, the same old ephemera. So obviously I can't put a July 7th, 1930 bank check in each journal because I only have one because it is an original. Um, but so here's like, here's one from December, 1930. So see, nearly identical. A little postcard to write on. This is an embossed, embossed with butterflies tag. And a stamped butterfly tag. So those things you can stick somewhere in the journal if you want to. And then use the pocket for other stuff. All right, let me scoot us down just a hair. There we go. We have lots of lace trimmings on the edges. This is just a little oh, snippet of some of the ribbon and a bead and... Uh, edging. Okay, first pocket over here is a page edge pocket or an edge pocket. A little postcard to write on and some stamped um, paper, which I've just put some washi tape on. Tim Holtz washi tape. And so you just have a nice piece of paper to write in, put in at the start of your journal. That was really nice for maybe just writing on here what, what you plan to do with the journal or if you're going to give the journal away maybe that's a nice piece of paper to write a note on um, for that the worksheet page here it is from a workbook from the 1950s or 60s something like that it's original um, ledger piece of ledger page here that's original from the 30s this is a book page from, I think, around the 70s out of a Reader's Digest book. So if you can see, it actually has its own um, edging or its own distressed edges here. That's not ink. That is from the book itself. So there's some of that ledger page. Um, or it's, this one's not ledger, but it's out of a ledger book. This is lined paper from that, but it is from the 30s. It's original. There's some book page. And as far as I can remember, I don't think there's a single digital in here. Um, you know, like a printed, out of a printer, digital uh, piece of paper. I don't think there's any in here. So if there is, I'll let you know. I'll point it out. This 
so this this is from a paper pad the papers from a couple of paper pads I had that um, just decided to try to use up in my stash uh, this is some piano roll paper from the early 1900s so I've I've um, doubled it up here so it's a little thicker for writing on All the plain sheets here are tea or coffee dyed paper, or um, some of them might be eco dyed. Some embossed roses there. A pretty butterfly in the center here to decorate up. If you wanted to, you could even glue the um, the edges down here maybe, and you could use this as a tuck spot. Or you could glue the outside edges and use it as a tuck spot if you wanted to. I have an embossed butterfly tag. Let's see if I can pick up the embossing on camera. That's sometimes hard to do. There we go. So that's just some, just some cardstock I've run through the embosser. It's got cute butterflies on the ribbon. Gold, everything's kind of gold shimmery. Again, some more embossed roses. So all these little workbook pages, activity pages, those are from those workbooks I purchased at a antique store. They're all originals from the 50s and 60s. So they are vintage, they are not antique. <laughs> Okay, and then we have here a little scorecard, original, so they're a little bit, a little bit dingy around the edges. Uh, this is a bank check from the 50s, original. Shh. Where's your ball, Carly? Find your ball. Another side pocket. These uh, these little rose roses um, decorations. You'll see there was that one, and then um, this like here, and then there's some other matching ones you'll see throughout the journal. That is some things that I received in one of those boxes um, from um, your creative studio. And so I was using up some of those things that she had sent me. So it's just a little fold-out journaling spot. Okay, so it's blank on both sides. There's a little pocket here if you want to tuck something in. Um, also, I left, when I attached the two sheets of paper together, I didn't sew this one down. So you'd have a little pocket there if you wanted to tuck something in that. And then it's just blank on the back. Lots of machine stitching, lots of blank pages for you to write in. So there, again, see there's some some of those pretty things from uh, your creative studio. Okay, so this is one of those signatures I was talking about. It's not a paper signature. It's, it's more of a storage type signature. We've got a cute little butterfly slide. This is um, actual original uh, vintage. Uh, slides. I think these are from probably around the 60s because most of the pictures that were inside of these look like they were from about the 60s. Um, okay, so this one is a pocket and you could put all kinds of things in here. Pictures and, and memorabilia and scraps of paper or anything you want to write on. But I did go ahead and make you a little journal card. Actually, it's quite a big journal card to keep in there and I did make a little small journal booklet um, just with an embossed butterfly tag there in the front and then these are just sheets of, of writing paper inside there. The pink is some paper that Lisa had done. Um, I can't remember. It's She echo dyed it mm, but I don't remember what they are like hibiscus or rose hips or something like that.
so plenty of room to store some things in there we have a pocket on the back and i've put a postcard now each journal will have a postcard but the picture on right here might be different it might be a different flower okay Okay, this is the middle signature. And then here we have some echo dyed paper. These are the originals, they're not digitals. These are the originals. Um, Dakota and I did these um, oh, a week or two ago and I'll have a video on my channel here soon um, of our results from that, but that's what these are from. Hopefully you can hear the wind chime. Can you hear the wind chime? That's my wind chime Lisa bought me for my birthday. And I just, I love listening to it when I'm out here in the shop. So I have a sheet of copy dyed cardstock. Um, just a little, a little note there, a little verse there. So just tucks up in here, plenty of space for you to write on. There's some of those worksheet pages. See, look at the edges. Isn't that cool? I didn't distress those. That's not ink. That's that's oh natural. <laughs> uh, little altered playing card. There's some Elisa's paper there. That pink stuff. We have some. Vintage music paper. None of these are digitals. They're all originals. Here's a 1967 um, calendar page, date book page. And I just kind of sewn it in here because they're small um, so that you get the full use of both sides. I stitched it to the page here. Gardening book. Mm, vintage, but I couldn't tell you the year. I think it's from the 60s. Embossed butterfly. Isn't that pretty? That gold. Again, another, this is like a Reader's Digest end book page. So most of those are from the 60s and 70s, 70s, I think. But they, they yellowed nicely over the years. And an original Edith Holden book page in each book. Like I said, might be a different page, but there is one in each. some cute trim right here on the page edge this is handmade hand crocheted trim couldn't tell you from when it's from and again there's some more of that echo dyeing that Dakota and I did this time I've cut it into a tag so because these are the originals you might see you know a little bit of of um, folding or some little teeny tiny minor, minor, you know, tears because the, this paper was soaking wet after we had had dyed it, had boiled it with all the vegetation. So that's kind of what's cool about using the originals and not the digitals. You get that that feeling and that texture. And then this is just a piece of coffee dyed paper that I've stenciled and then it folds out for some extended journaling. Another original echo dyed card. Uh, I think that's a Tim Holtz piece mm, my stomach's growling <laughs> there's some of that pretty pretty lace edging I had found at the um, 
antique store recently. A huge bundle of it. It's so pretty though. Okay, and then here is the second of those storage signatures. So I have some sorry silk here. I've got a little journaling card tucked in. And so this one opens up like a folder. So we have a pocket over here on this side with a tag. And this side is a pullout journal. So it's a belly band. Um, you could tuck other things in there if you wanted to, if you didn't want to put this journal back in its spot. This is the last signature, a writing signature or a journaling signature. We have another original date book page. This one just happens to be from 1962. Little tag. There is one of these uh, card it's a face off of a card. There's one of these in each journal, but the picture is going to be um, different. And all of them are Claude Monet um, paintings on there. And somebody gave me these. I'm trying to remember who it was. I think it was Allie, Allie the Cockney Crafter. I'm thinking she gave me these. And I've just had them and finally found a really good place to use them. embossed butterfly tag it's hard to pick the embossing up on on the camera there's another Edith Holden book page Here or paper clipped is a little accordion book. So a little front and back cover, cardstock cover, and we accordion out that way. And then you've got this full side to write on on the back. And then I just straddled the front and the back over the music page and paper clipped it on. So you could stick that in a little pocket or something if you want to. Another date book page. There's another pull out journaling paper. A little postcard um, cardstock. Um, oh, this one is a digital. Um, I had already had them printed out. They've been sitting around forever. I think it's um, maybe it's Amusings by Nikki Digital. I'm not really sure. I, but I've had these little cards printed out forever. So I just grabbed some of them and tucked them in there. So I think that so far that's the only digital we've had. And though I make digitals, you know, and have those in my shop, it was really fun, I think, to just create my own ephemera and, and create without using digital papers. Though I do, you know, I love to use digital papers and I love to make digital papers, but it was kind of fun. 
stepping away from that for this time. So we have a little charm here on the ribbon or on the lace edging. It says just says made with love. Um, and then my handmade by the book vandal shop tag here in the back. Okay. So there we are. There are three of them. There is a green one, um, a pink, pinkish, pinkish orangey one, and then we have an orange one, um, orange and gold. And so, like I said, those will be in my shop tonight, Tuesday, August 16th. They will be in there tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So, all right. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for looking. Um, thanks for hanging out with me for darn near 30 minutes. Didn't mean to take that long. <laughs> all right. Let me know what you think of these guys, and I will see you all really soon. Bye.